Hi. Uh, yes, I'm Oliver Langdon uh, from Kilter Theatre. Uh, and I've been asked just to say a few words, eight minutes worth of words, uh, about um, Kilter's approach to creating low carbon, sustainable theatre, the actual practice that we employ when we're making the work. So it's one thing to have a show about the issue, but another how you actually make a show which contributes hopefully to that agenda. Um, what we do, um, broadly speaking, is we make um, devised site-specific theatre from our base in Bath around an ecological theme. Um, so over time we've done, um, our first production was in the Bath Abbey Cemetery, where we were looking at uh, resource depletion, we were looking at carbon footprinting, and then we went on uh, to the Bristol to Bath railway path and we looked at issues around um, sustainable transport. And then we started touring allotments and community gardens and we were looking at issues about uh, our relationship with food and what the future of food might look like. And then most recently we've been touring a production in the back of a converted Luton lorry uh, which is uh, converted into a small theatre for 18 people and a letter writing emporium and that production kind of embraces themes around the slow movement and uh, perhaps to do with uh, community distinctiveness and loss of local identity and the impact that might have on this kind of agenda that we're discussing today. Um, so big themes. And it sounds immediately like uh, we're kind of lecturers or scientists or preachers or something trying to put across our ideas through our plays. But I wanted to iterate really at the outset that what we are is creative people and this has already come up a lot today that what we do is we make plays and we're not preachers and we're not lecturers or scientists we um, look at uh, the subject of people uh, we look at relationships we look at stories and we uh, draw our audiences in in that way and set them against a, a background which kind of uh, illuminates in some way these different topics that we're talking about um, quite often uh, they'll be set against a backdrop which is a very positive model of a future that we hope we might be able to aspire to as a society. A really kind of positive vibe, um, whether that means we've gone through a really negative time to come to that place, whether it's about technological fixes or whether it's about maybe taking a few steps back in our um, development and uh, finding a different way of leading our lives. Um, we, we set the stories, the relationships, the people against those backdrops and we make, hopefully, a desirable place for the audience to want to be. So the audience sits there or stands there, depending on where we are, and, and wishes that they could be part of the world that we're presenting. And that immediately raises the question of how do we do it? How do the audience get themselves into that world? And so that's really what I've been asked to speak about. Um, one of the major things we do is we try to embed solutions into everything. Uh, so everything that the audience is looking at, they understand that this is part of this positive vision. So from very basic things like all the set, the props, the costumes are recycled, they're found, they're salvaged, they're secondhand. And we're lucky that we're uh, in a time at the moment, I guess, where that kind of look is fairly um, attractive, fairly desirable in its own right, that sort of retro, vintage chic. So we're riding that wave and that's, that's great. So much so that our... Uh, Roots um, Shed, which has been up um, as a photograph during the course of the day, has become such a desirable object. Now it tours without the play, goes to different allotments and community gardens. People come and visit it, have picnics, take photographs of it, and it, and it grows as we move it. We clad it with more rubbish from people's allotment hedgerows and things, and it's become such a thing of sort of um, desirability and beauty that the Hoban Museum in Bath wishes to exhibit it. We've arrived. Um, so there's that. And then there's uh, other kind of more um, practical issues, I suppose. Um, we have a power generation issue sometimes. We, I mean, our first choice is to work outside and to work at close proximity with our audience. So we don't need unnatural amplification uh, and we don't need to provide any additional lighting. That's the ideal. But sometimes we go inside, sometimes we have recorded music or whatever. The last post in the back of a van um, is, is indoors. We have little low energy uh, LED lighting, angle poise lights inside the van. Um, it looks beautiful and it's powered by a wind turbine little collapsible touring wind turbine that we've taken and each venue we set up and we set up the turbine on the roof of the van and as the audience approach the theatre in the back of the van they understand this is where the energy is coming from and then the play is set in a world where the characters draw their energy down from the turbine so it's part of a desirable world they go oh, I love these people I love what they're doing I love their lives I love where they get their energy from it's, um, it's uh, not only given as uh, something to draw people in but it's immediately obvious how that can be made possible 
Um, and then we, we go further, uh, not just putting kind of answers, solutions, whatever, on, on, the, on the stage in the uh, world of the characters that we're portraying, but also uh, into the hands of the audience immediately, the way they live their lives. So we try and establish a, a, a positive overall impact of the production when we put the play on, you know, we're aware that audiences will arrive from all over the place. We do site-specific shows, so people have to travel to be there. We kind of start thinking about people's car journeys, that kind of thing. So we're very clear um, in our publicity. We always include public transport, timetables, that kind of thing. Take some responsibility for how your audience arrives. Um, and in fact, with The Last Post, this most recent model, uh, it's based on some data collected by Julie's Bicycle um, that... Uh, sets out how one vehicle actually traveling around uh, rural communities, one small audience at a time, reduces the total number of cars on the road as people from you know, rural villages, whatever, travel into cultural centers to see plays, exhibitions, bands, or whatever. So we take the van around, and that's based on that model of trying to reduce the number of car journeys on the road. Um, and then beyond their, their experience of actually going to the theatre, we try and enrol the audience immediately into that desirable world that I've already talked a lot about. Um, so if you've ever been to see any of our work, you'll know it's not a, a sit in an audience, watch a play kind of experience. It's a get on your bicycle kind of experience. You know, for back on track, people had to actually drag their bikes out of the sheds, dust them off, pump the tyres up and come and have a great time and think, oh, wow, I'm having a great time on my bicycle. I'd forgotten how good this could be. I think I'll come back next week and ride this path. And while I'm cycling past that rape field, I'll remember those guys with the bikes above their heads. And we've sort of enriched the, the territory, I suppose, in some way. So um, we toured um, allotments and community gardens. And uh, in that show, people were planting. And we've heard anecdotally that people come back to the sites where we did the show so they could taste the fruit, you know, collect the harvest that they put in the ground a few years ago. Um, the last post ends with the opportunity for the audience to write a letter. We've got a, a, a real-life working pen pal exchange scheme in the back of the van. So people find themselves a new pen pal and they write a letter and then they go home and they wait, hoping that someone will write back to them. And uh, it makes context in the in the uh, makes sense. Sorry, in the context of the production, but already they're participating in a kind of a, a slow movement. They're engaged in that activity, and maybe choosing some you know other ways of communicating and stuff has other connotations. Um, so there's all that going on. Um, but we did um, a, a carbon audit of our work several years ago, and um, as a result of it, we kind of panned out to see even further uh, what what kind of um, emissions we could take responsibility for as a, as a production company, you know, what, what carbon was being emitted as a result of the work that we were doing. And, you know, the, the shows themselves, they're, they're, as I've said, site-specific, devised, kind of um, out and about. Quite often we work with small audiences, literally on the ground. We have 18 people in the back of a van. We have 30 people limit for back on track. Um, but because we're making work in the public realm, actually we have sometimes a much larger ambient audience. When you're doing something like that in rehearsal process, people are stopping and paying attention and asking what on earth it is that you're doing. And you need to have an explanation and kind of take some responsibility perhaps for that. Um, but it's also the incidental audience of the partners, the funders, um, the bookers, the artists that we work with. Um, they all have got a carbon footprint, perhaps that wouldn't be quite so big if it wasn't for their interaction with us. Um, so we asked ourselves as a result of that auditing process, what is it, what, what is it that we can do um, to take some responsibility for that? And we came back to the same thing that I talked about, which is actually, as artists, we can tell a story. And the story is the story of the theatre company. And the characters in the story are us. And we try and create a desirable model that other artists, other practitioners might uh, aspire to duplicate. So to give you an example, the, 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 the model that we used to create the last post, the show we're touring at the moment, um, we realized that the most kind of carbon hungry element perhaps in the creative process was the actors. The actors come from all over the place to rehearsals in the morning. They arrive maybe one by one in their car, they're parking up, uh, and then lunchtime comes, everyone dashes off to Sainsbury's local and gets a you know, heavily packaged um, food mile intensive sandwich. Um, all this is sort of putting our, our carbon budget bigger and bigger. Um, so we, for the last post, took five or six actors down to Beeford Art Centre in North Devon, and we worked on the production residentially, which is something we'd never done before. 
Um, so the commute in in the morning was walk downstairs. Everyone arrived on time, so it's got double plus sides. Um, we started the day uh, because we were on time and we were in a beautiful place and there was nowhere else to go. We started the day with a walking meeting, going out into the fields, discussing some of the issues that were kind of sticky in the play. And we're suddenly in touch tangibly with the changing seasons, the environment, which is at the heart of the work. Uh, we go back into rehearsal room, work really hard, come out at lunchtime, and lo and behold, the production assistant, who was largely employed because of her culinary expertise, has taken all our pooled per diems, gone to the local um, greengrocers, and got the best local seasonal organic food, and created this fantastic vegetarian spread, which feeds the cast. We're working together. Uh, we're highly energised to go back into the afternoon's rehearsal room. And at the end of the day, we produced a piece of work which reflected all of that. It's all of that is bedded into it. And we're now touring the last post as a result of that work. So that's, that's the story of the happy company, kind of making something in a, in a way which is measurably um, low carbon, measurably sustainable. I think that's about my eight minutes, actually. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, and uh, is there time for questions? There's time for one question. Thank you. How close are you and So this is a publicity image, but this is we were work, this is um, taken from during uh, the rehearsal process when we were trying to work out whether uh, it was uh, feasible, and in the end it wasn't feasible, but it looked quite pretty, so we used it on the posters. <laughs> but it stopped people. The point I think I was trying to make is it stopped people who were cycling down the cycle path, which runs behind. Their, their hedges on the edge of this field, and they said, what are you doing? And we said, we're rehearsing a play, and it's about this, that, and the other. Thank, Thank you. you very much.